Thank you. Thanks, Alicia. I am so super excited you guys are here and I'm glad you find your way here. I know we didn't necessarily make it easy on you guys, but I really appreciate you guys showing up to create this awesome family size, gather size, hot chocolate bomb. This is one of the latest things, um, latest food trend this season at Christmas, and we're going to learn today how to do it. So my name is Jill Baitke, and I'm the owner of Kaboom Chakalaka. And currently, I'm in Irving, Texas at the American Crafts office. So this isn't my normal kitchen, but we make it work just fine. So if um, we have any hangups, um, just bear with me. We'll get it all worked out. So um, let's i i would love to know more about like who's all viewing so like felicia said if you want to let me know where you're zooming in from i love that let me know if you've ever created a um hot cocoa bomb before no matter what the size or any breakable pinatas i've been doing this for four years and for over four years now and i have lots of ideas um that and lots of different creations. And so if you've bought any of the Kaboom Chakalaka molds, and if you have any questions about them, just let me know, look me up on, on, on all the social media or so it seems. So uh, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, TikTok, look for Kaboom Chakalaka and I would love to answer your questions. I'm also hoping to answer a lot of your questions today as we go through this. So definitely use the chat and Felicia will um, pipe in whenever there's a question. But um, we got a lot to do today. So let's get started. Um, I hope you're as excited as I am anyway. But um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a quick look at the Kaboom Chakalaka mold. So most of the molds come in three different paces. There's a top to them, a bottom, and then there's a plug at the bottom of them. And this plug is what helps create a fully enclosed pinata and creates a filler hole like for your chocolate or your candy. So we'll, we'll talk more about that later. Um, but the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna start right in with the chocolate. Now for time's sake, um, and if anybody is creating one today, uh, uh, just let me know in the chat. I will try to slow down at certain points to make sure everybody gets caught up. But if you're all um, going to just watch for now and learn and maybe view the recording afterwards, and uh, that, that works too. So we started, um, I already started melting some chocolate. And today I am using the Sweet Tooth Fairy chocolate brand. I really like this brand of chocolate. I think it has an excellent flavor and it's really easy to work with. It's very forgiving. So even if you overheat it a little bit, you can still tend to work with it. Um, so that's what we're using today. And the amount that we're using is roughly around 30 to 32 ounces of chocolate. If uh, this, this, recipe for a family size hot cocoa bomb is relatively adjustable. So if this is your first time doing it and you want to use a little bit more chocolate just to make sure that pinata doesn't crack, you're more than welcome to do that. If your family, if this is for a party where everybody has a sweeter tooth, use more chocolate. Um, if this is not your first time using this mold or making this pinata and you want to use less chocolate and have it less sweet, you're more than welcome to do that. I would say on average that I use around 30 ounces of chocolate. And um, if I was packing this pinata full of heavy candy, I might use a little bit more just because that weight of the candy, you know, I, I wanna make sure that there's no cracks in the pinata if there's any weaknesses in the pinata. Um, but since we're only gonna stuff it with marshmallows, then I'll probably use around 30 ounces of chocolate. So what we can, we can do is we're, um, oh, let's go back to melting our chocolate. I forgot that I already did this, but if you guys are following along and want to do that. So we melted our chocolate according to the instructions on back of the package, which says to melt it at 50% power, not defrost, 50% power level in your microwave for one minute. Now, meltables don't break down unless you stir them. So if you're watching your microwave and you're thinking nothing is happening, 
take it out and give it a stir. Even the first, after the first minute, you might not notice any change, but that's still fine because you want to rotate the meltables that are at the bottom of your bowl and bring them to the top because and just kind of even out that temperature. And so since this is a good amount of chocolate, what I did was I put it in the microwave at 50% power, melted it for a minute, gave it a stir, took it out again, did another minute. This microwave, I had to do another full minute. If you have a higher power microwave or if you've already, you're using less chocolate and you, you wanna reduce that amount of time um, to like maybe 45 seconds or 30 seconds, uh, you, you know, you can do that. You just kind of have to pay attention to how the chocolate is breaking down. You want to get to a point and maybe, let's see, maybe at this time we switch over to the overhead camera. I'm gonna move our, our practice ball here and I'll bring this over so you can take a closer look at the chocolate. Okay, so you'll keep putting your chocolate in the microwave and uh, rotate, uh, stirring it, heating it up, reducing the amount of time until it gets to about this consistency. So you can see that it's like nice and smooth. It's not gloopy. If you let it sit, sit and it, it starts getting um, like wrinkles in it. I heard one, somebody said, it's, if it looks like elephant skin, like wrinkly, wrinkly like elephant skin, then that means it's it's probably too hot. And so you'll want to let your chocolate cool down a little bit before you add it to the mold. Now you can add it to the mold when it's too hot, but I advise against it for two reasons. One reason is that um, when the molds snap together, they, bring this over here. Um, when the molds snap together, they that heat gets trapped in there and you'll start hearing what sounds like plastic crunching together like kind of like that noise i don't know if it's if that's being picked up or not and that means there's too much heat trapped inside of it and you'll have to if that's the case then the mold itself um could if there's too much heat in it the mold itself could uh kind of come apart at the seams and so we want to make sure that we don't have too much heat trapped in it. Now, the other reason why I don't advise putting too hot of chocolate in the mold is because that it's when you take the hot chocolate and put it in the fridge, if there's too much of a drastic change in temperature, then you, that could cause sugar or fat blooms. And that's like the fat separating out and causing white spots on your chocolate. For a hot chocolate bomb, it's probably not a big, big deal. But if you're doing any other breakables or pinatas, then um, like if you're doing a nice red Santa Claus, probably don't want it sprinkled with a bunch of white spots. And so you just wanna make sure that your chocolate has a good consistency, is um, good room temperature. It's not too sludgy um, where it might be too cold and it's not too, runny or goopy um, where it might be too hot. So there is a, there's a, a Goldilocks temperature for the chocolate. And the more you work with multiples and stuff like that, you become familiar with what really works well. Um, and they, like I said, they're very forgiving. So that, those are just some hints, but I don't, you know, obviously want to scare you off from using them. They're actually really easy to work with. Okay. So like I mentioned with the mold, there is a top and a bottom with the filler hold, hole. Now, if you're messy like me, that using this filler hole to fill in your chocolate probably um, wouldn't work too well. So what I like to do is I like to just take the top half of it. So the half that doesn't have the, um, the plug or the hole in the bottom. And I just like to pour my chocolate right in here. And like I said, I'm using about probably around thir uh, 30 ounces of chocolate. I'm not gonna pour all of it in because I think I melted a little bit extra, but all right. And if at this point, if your chocolate has been sitting too long, you're more than welcome to try to give it a stir. This will also kind of help prevent some 
sugar or fat blooms by reincorporating some of those ingredients together. Like if any of the fat has separated or things like that, then you're welcome to give it a stir. Hey Jill, we Alrighty. have a couple of questions for you. Sure. So there's a question asking, which um, chocolate multiple are you recommending? Are you using the regular chocolate or the dark chocolate? In this case, I'm using um, the regular chocolate, but you're more than welcome to use white chocolate. The um, Sweet Tooth Fairy also has a peppermint brand that I think is delicious. Um, you can use the dark chocolate. You really can use whatever um, kind of chocolate, whether it's real chocolate or meltables that you want. All of it works in the mold because it is a plastic mold. So you're more than welcome to use whatever uh, brand or flavor that you like. We, because um, I was going to talk about this at, later on in the class, but I might as well mention it now, because the amount of chocolate that is in the mold, I actually don't tend to add any hot cocoa to this recipe. I I personally feel that it, the amount of chocolate that is in the bomb itself, it makes it a pretty, has a pretty good sweetness. But like I said, everybody has their own preferences. If your family has a sweeter tooth, then you might want to add a little bit of cocoa later. And we can talk about that later on. But um, for the most part, I don't, to these family size hot cocoa bombs, I don't really add any cocoa to them. And then there's a question right. asking, is there a particular temperature that the chocolate should be at? Yes, I should know this. Um, and I don't. I, you know, I've been doing this for so many years. And um, I, I did uh, buy a, a food thermometer that I thought I was going to use. And I just, I got used to the chocolate, the feel of it. And so my, my apologies, I kind of am probably a little old school on that. Um, I'm sure, and, and I apologize that I can't answer this question, but I do, um, I think like initially I Googled, you know, what, the chalk, what temperature the cho chocolate should be at. The reason I like using the meltables is because you don't have to temper them. Obviously with real chocolate, you do have to temper them. That creates another layer of expertise. So that would be for a more advanced class. So that's, we're using meltables because they're, very, they're they are easy to use. And like I said, even if it's too hot, if the chocolate is too hot and um, you notice that your mold is kind of popping, um, then, you know, just get, you know, give it a chance to cool down. If it gets too cool at this point, um, which isn't too bad right now, it's still nice and smooth in the texture. Um, but if, you know, you got a phone call or got distracted, you can always basically scrape off it out of this mold and reheat it. Um, the molds are plastic, so obviously they don't go in the microwave or the dishwasher, but um, you could scrape it back in the bowl I would recommend though, anytime you use a mold that you start with a clean mold, because sometimes if there's any residue left over on it, that um, the chocolate, when you create a new pin, pinata, it will kind of, it, sometimes it, it sticks a little bit too much to the um, plastic. Sometimes it's not an issue, but I always, of course, um, recommend that you start with a very clean, a very dry mold. Um, chocolate is mostly oil. And if you remember from science class, oil and water don't mix. So um, you don't want to add any watery liquid to your chocolate. All right. Does that help? I think so. Okay. I think that's the last question at the moment. <laughs> All right. Well, keep them coming. I love I love answering and I, and no, I don't, even though I've been doing this for a while, I don't have every answer. And so I love learning too. I mean, I, um, you know, we all can learn from one another and that's what makes this community like so great. So any of the food crafters out there, I mean, I've, I've had just a overall a tremendous positive experience, um, with them. I'm in a lot of Facebook groups. I answer a lot of questions. I learn a lot of things from them. So everybody's really willing to help one another out. So it's a great community. So I'm glad you guys are all here. <laughs> all right. So we're going to um, go back. Oops. Oh, my little tab. 
came flying off there, but that's okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna snap the top and bottom together. So I start kind of at one end and then I just work my way around it. And you can hear it snapping together pretty well. And you can, like I said, if it if it's too hot and you you're starting to hear your the plastic kind of crunch, um, you can leave this off initially. Um, but I I can tell that my chocolate has is pretty much um, cooled down a lot. So I'm going to put this tab right on it, and it fits just right on top. And then since you, I took a few questions and let it sit a bit, I'm going to give it a nice twirl and shake, and just kind of re like kind of mix it without using a spatula or a spoon. So, and I'm just working it away, working it down to that bottom. All right, and I'm making sure all of the mold is covered. You can see there's a little spot right there that isn't. We're gonna bring it around again. And now it is. So if at this point, like I said, your mold is starting to crunch a little bit, all you have to do is take off this tab. And you can, I don't know if you saw that on or heard it on camera, but it gave a little bloop. So I knew there was some heat trapped inside of there. And what I like to do is I like to keep a little bit of chocolate on that tab because this is going to create a um, chocolate plug and um, that we're going to use later. All right. And before we put it in the fridge, if you want to rotate it just a little bit more, obviously you have to be careful if you don't have your tab on, you have to be careful not to let any chocolate. But I'm, our fridge here in the office is around the corner. So I'm gonna hand this to Jamie and she's going to take it to the fridge for one minute and um, let it uh, sit in there for one minute before we take it out again and rotate it again. So Jamie has helped um, with all my classes and has set everything up. So give her a round of applause in the chat, if you don't mind for me, she has been a lifesaver on a lot of these classes. So, um, but this, this might be a good time. If there is any more questions, we can take some questions or I can continue talking about the process. I see. There hasn't been. I see it. <laughs> Huh? Everybody, they, they, it appears that everyone is enjoying the class so far. I don't All have right. any Well, that, like I said, <laughs> you go ahead, go ahead. Okay, yeah, I think our I got a little note on the screen. It has since gone away, but the connection became a little unstable. But it looks like it it came back now. So sorry for all the technical difficulties. Clearly, we're in, we are live, so and it happens. Um, but yeah, so we're it, right now. It's in the fridge, and so we're going to take it out after about a minute or two, and then we're going to rotate it. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to build up those layers of chocolate, and it, you're trying to make them as even as possible. They don't have to be perfect. It's going to be inside your pinata. You know, if it gets a little crazy inside, don't worry about it. All right, so we got it back now, and I think we, we don't have to switch to overhead. Um, but basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it. If um, at this time, like if you're worried about the chocolate coming out of the bottom, um, a lot of times that tab, since it's a very thin layer of chocolate, it will. Um, harden much quicker than all the chocolate in here. So once it's hardened, you can take that little chocolate tab, that chocolate plug off, and then put the clear plastic one back on here. But I'm going to try to do it without spilling. Um, I'm going to try to rotate it because you especially want to make sure that you build the layers around the your filler hole. Because in my experience, I feel like if a pinata is gonna crack, it's usually, down here at the bottom because I've been uh, I've been too concerned about leaving this hole open and then I don't um, I don't always realize that I have not built up 
the chocolate significantly for the layers there. All right, so I'm just kind of going around rotating it. And the chocolate at this point is still pretty runny. That means it's still pretty warm. So we're gonna put it back in the fridge for another minute. If you first put yours in the fridge for like two minutes, then you wanna reduce your time for a minute. Um, definitely pay attention to like, if it starts getting sludgier, then you might wanna only put it in um, for 30 seconds. But in my case, mine was really still pretty runny. And so we're gonna rotate it. Normally we would rotate it a few more times and continue to build up those chocolate layers. Um, but for the sake of this class, <laughs> we're, it's like the Rachel ratio, um, not quite, <laughs> but we, we are going to um, uh, kind of fast forward and take in an already completed pinata. So once you're done rotating all those layers of chocolate and it's really starting to get like sludgy and hardened, meaning much cooler, then you would leave it in your fridge for 30 minutes and really harden all those layers of chocolate that you've created all the way through. So obviously, since this class being an hour long, we cannot just stand around here and wait the 30 minutes. So we are going to do a switcheroo on you, although I'm telling you about it, so it's not too um, magical here. Um, but this is now a hardened pinata. And if you, there's a, so at this point, like I said, if there's, um, if your pinata is probably gonna break, it's probably gonna break at this point. So let's talk about some tips to prevent that from happening. The majority of the time, I don't have to worry about most of these, but this is just, you know, some tips in case you wanna watch out for it. So if your pinata is hardened and you can look inside and, as the light is trying to come through, it's a little bit harder with some of these darker ones. But you can kind of spot, if you hold it up to the light, you can kind of spot to see if there's any weakness in the, in the chocolate. If you see a lot of light coming through a certain point, you might want to just add a little bit of chocolate to that point and let it harden again. Um, in this case, if I'm looking around here, I really don't see any light coming through, so I think I've coated it pretty well. The next thing to kind of watch out for is around this tab that if sometimes it's hard to remove the plastic if this is caked too much around here. So you can use um, a dull knife or even your fingernail um, or, you know, just something or even we have the seam tool and you can kind of just work your way around it to make sure that there's not too much chocolate cake um, with the plastic. And that, um, that will just help you release the pinata, the mold a little bit better from the pinata. So, and you don't wanna use too sharp of a knife because obviously this is plastic. And if you use too sharp of a knife, you're gonna get some plastic shards and that um, will, you know, that's plastic and food don't mix too well. Just ask all those fish in the ocean. Anyway, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's a different topic. Um, so when you get the uh, mold out of the fridge, then the next thing um, to do, what I like to do is just slowly try to go around here. Like I don't try to rip them apart. I just try to slowly loosen up the edges. And that is to create an air layer in there um, between the chocolate and your plastic. So it, it's kind of hard to tell on this on the camera, but if you notice that there's a foggy layer in there, that's actually a really good sign. That means your chocolate has released from the plastic. But, and I don't think we have one, um, but if you notice that your, your, the chocolate is really shiny up against the plastic, that means it hasn't released. Now, if you notice that all around your mold, that probably needs you, means you need to put it back in the fridge. 
um, and let it harden just a little bit more. But if you've noticed maybe just a couple spots here and there where it's the chocolate is really shiny and pressed against the plastic, sometimes you can just gently press those and it will release. A lot of times I don't always start with pressing first, but what I'll do is just like I mentioned, just start slowly going around, trying to get, this one has released already, um, trying to get the plastic, trying to get some air in there and releasing the chocolate from the mold. All righty. And let's see here. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but there is a small crack there. So as I warned you, <laughs> a lot of times when, if it's going to crack, it's probably going to crack at the bottom. Usually a, a minor crack at the bottom here is not going to be a big um, concern. Um, obviously, if you had one across the pinata, that might be more of a concern. A lot of times you can just touch these up. Um, so I might take a little bit of chocolate over here and just touch it up a little bit just to make sure it doesn't um, get worse. That's kind of those like those little cracks in your windshield. Sometimes you got to patch some of the um, smaller ones because you don't want them to um, break across your window. All righty, let's see. So I think we're already to the point to fill it unless we have some questions. I don't have really any questions because I do believe you kind of answered um, as far as the chocolate and about it solidifying again. So um, other than that, if you can just kind of mention again about the chocolate and, and is there a particular time of how fast you should be using it? Um, so as you know, sugar is a really good preservative. <laughs> so I'll, if you keep these in a cool, dry place away from direct sunlight, direct heat in a very like airtight plastic container, typically, um, it will pro it will probably last you a couple weeks. Now, I would not fill them with marshmallows because as you know, marshmallows, you know, will um, harden pretty quickly. Um, but if you wanted to create several of these, um, especially thinking about so this this mold this large sphere mold has an eight inch diameter we have a mini mold that has a 2.75 inch diameter that mold is really great for individual size hot cocoa bombs and what makes that mold really great a lot of people didn't want to the from the feedback i received a lot of people didn't want to, for every other mold out there on the market, you had to take two halves to create one hot cocoa bomb. So you would have to, you know, create a top half and a bottom half, um, fill one side of it, and then melt the two together. It does take a little bit more time. It takes a little bit more experience. And so some people didn't want to do that, um, which is understandable. And so we have this small mini mold, very similar to this one, where you don't have to create two halves and put them together. It creates one large um, hot cocoa bomb. So that mini mold also works really well for the hot cocoa bomb. So a lot of people use that. Um, if they're gonna create several of them, they will um, make those maybe even like, I've heard three weeks in advance. I've never done three weeks in advance, but some people have had luck with three weeks in advance, and, you know, assuming that they're in a controlled environment, you know, a, a cool, dry, airtight space. Um, and then they won't fill them with the marshmallows or cocoa or candy or whatever they're filling them with until maybe like the day before or something like that. And that's what I would recommend, especially with marshmallows or any candy that isn't wrapped or doesn't have like a hard case. Like M&Ms, they have a hard case on them. They're gonna last a while, but your gummies, um, just like the marshmallows, there's going to be a moisture exchange between the chocolate and the candy. And so your chocolate might become a little um, not as good and your marshmallows and gummies might harden a little bit faster. So um, 
if you have all wrap candy or hard shell candy, not an issue. So it's it just, it really varies what you're going to put inside, but the shell itself, since sugar is a great preservative, probably will last you uh, without any problem, probably like a couple of weeks. Now you might lose some shine to it because it, some of the oil that's in there is what gives us this glossy shine. So it might become a little bit dull, but usually the taste of it is still okay. So it just, you have to really make sure you have it in a, a good environment. All right. So like I said before, with these family size hot cocoa bombs, I really feel, especially with the sweet tooth fairy um, flavor, which I think um, might, might have li a little bit sweeter chocolate taste to it. I really feel like you don't have to add any hot cocoa to this. Um, if you are creating a hot cocoa bomb for, let's say, well, let me back up here for a second. So we're gonna fill this with a bag of marshmallows and then to, um, to we're gonna put it in like a stew pot, a Dutch oven, a crock pot or something like that. And we're gonna pour, pour hot milk over it. You can choose water. Um, you can use a different liquid that obviously would work well. I think somebody has tried coffee. That seems like a lot of chocolate coffee, but I'm not a big caffeine drinker. So maybe that's, that's what people are going for. Um, so, but usually a gallon of milk. So we're going to do a little math here. So gallon of milk is 128 ounces. <laughs> I just probably should have wrote that down before class. I just looked at Jamie. She's like, no, <laughs> um, 128 ounces. So if you figure on average, a serving size is one cup or eight ounces. That gives you, if you're going to pour the, put this bomb in a pot and pour a gallon of milk all over it, you're going to get roughly about 16 servings. So depending on the size of your gathering, um, you could add more, if you have more than 16 ounces uh, or servings, 16 guests, then you could add more chocolate or more cocoa to it to make it sweeter. If you're like my kids, an eight ounce serving is not an appropriate kid side servings. They want more. <laughs> um, so you, you know, you can kind of, adjust from there. And that's what I was saying, like in the beginning, like it's, this is one of those recipes, like, I really honestly feel like you can't mess it up. If you um, pour some milk in and you don't want to use a whole gallon, and you pour the milk in, and you taste it, and you're saying, okay, it's too sweet, add more milk. If you're saying it's not sweet enough, add cocoa or add, you know, melt some more chocolate. But just to give you the initial bomb effect, this is the way we're gonna create it. So it's, it's really up to your preferences. So like I said, I thought using sweet tooth fairy chocolate, roughly around 30 ounces for one bomb was sweet enough with a gallon of milk. And then we, I filled it with one bag of marshmallows. Obviously, if you want a lot more marshmallows, what I would suggest, and now we have, I'm gonna, I'll go back to that thought in just a second, but I'm just um, filling them in through the filler hole. And I'm just going to dump the whole bag in here. So if you want more marshmallows, obviously if you want less, don't put a whole bag in there. Um, but if you want more marshmallows, what I would actually recommend is that um, you put a bag in first, and then after you pour your hot milk over it, that milk is gonna dissolve a lot of those marshmallows. And so I would probably wait until some of those dissolved and maybe add some, um, some more marshmallows at that point, if you prefer that, or add some of the bigger ones or things like that. So they're going to completely adjustable. All right. So at this point, um, we have um, the bomb ready to go with the marshmallows inside. So now we're going to plug up this hole. And I'm thinking that um, might have a little bit life left in this chocolate. It has hardened 
a lot, but that's actually not a bad thing. Let's switch over to the overhead for a, a minute on this one. There it goes. Okay, so we want to put, let me grab, forgot to grab the, our chocolate plugs here. So what we want to do is to place a um, chocolate plug on top here. And you can see that at this point, it will likely fall through. So if I'm filling this candy pinata, if I was filling this with candy, I would likely fill it all the way full. So then I could place that chocolate plug just right on top of the um, candy and just add my chocolate around there. But with these hot cocoa bombs, unless you want to pack it full, really full of marshmallows, um, we don't have anything, anything there that will um, hold that plug in place. So what we kind of need to do at this point, and at this point, hopefully your chocolate has cooled down significantly, like mine has, you can see it's really sludgy. Um, we're going to just try to kind of build a bridge around here. Um, and it doesn't, have, this is going to be the bottom of it. It doesn't have to look pretty, just slather it on. And we're just going to try to create not a full bridge like going across, but just kind of close that hole a little bit more. All right, let's see if that will do it. Will that rest on top of there? Here, hold on just one second here. All right. Yeah, it looks like that might fit right on top of there. And then at this point, I think I'm gonna have to, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but my chocolate is pretty much done. So I'm gonna let that rest a little bit and I'm going to put pop this in the microwave um, for probably just 30 seconds at 50%. Give that, um, a little bit of a, but while that's in there, if there's any questions, that would, you know, be a good time to take some. Actually, there is a question asking okay. if you had a mini uh, piano bowl, would it be the same procedure or same process? Pretty much so. Now I do with the minis, I do probably add around a teaspoon of cocoa. Um, that's my preference, but. Um, I've heard other people add like a tablespoon. Um, again, I think I personally feel that the chocolate usually is enough to give you a really good chocolate flavor that you really don't need um, some hot cocoa in there. But if you're doing different flavors, like if you're doing like a white chocolate shell with white chocolate cocoa or a pumpkin spice shell with pumpkin spice cocoa or salted caramel, that's a popular one too. Um, then, you know, you could add a little bit more cocoa in there to give it just a little bit more pizzazz. And I would, um, this season, um, I'm also planning to use Sweet Tooth Fairy's peppermint meltables to make a peppermint hot cocoa bomb. So uh, there are plenty of options. So again, and since we don't have any hot cocoa in here, there's not, you don't have to fill in every hole because it's not going to leak out. Now, if you did have a hot cocoa mix in here, then you would definitely want to make sure that every little hole is um, filled in. So as you're moving it around, it's not going to leak out. But I've got a little um, extra tab here. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm just going to, it won't rest. Let's see if I can move this. My screen is kind of crowded here. Um, I get all these messages on here about the recording and things like that, but um, it's not going to rest well at the bottom. So I'm just going to try to break that off, broke off pretty easily. Um, and we're just going to fill in some of these holes if you want. All right. Oops, and I got to, like I said, I mean, as long as you kind of get it connected, this is not a pretty one at all. Sorry, I'm not, a, I'm not showing any of my talents right now. Um, <laughs> the, 
as long as you have it somewhat connected there. You can also, um, let's see here. We have this, this set that has a fondant scraper in, oops, and has a couple of paint brushes. And you can obviously use those to decorate your uh, hot cocoa bomb or any of your pinatas, but um, my chocolate right now is a little bit too dry, but if it was a little bit more runny, you could use this fondant scraper to smooth it out a little bit better if you wanted to make sure that it's set nice and even. Okay. All right. And there's a question. I'll take it. If not, I'll keep moving on. So there are some people that just recently joined the class. And so they were, they didn't see or notice in um, when you were making it about the cocoa. So they were trying to figure out how did this become a hot cocoa bun without the cocoa? Yeah, so um, I call it a hot chocolate bomb. I think, I feel like a lot of people have kind of used those terms interchangeably. But yes, you're more than welcome to add cocoa and call it a hot cocoa bomb. I I probably have at some point during the class said hot cocoa bomb uh, when I intended to say hot chocolate bomb. Um, they, it's not going to hurt if you add cocoa to it. I, my personal preference is like, I felt that the chocolate was sweet enough. And so I didn't feel like the need to add any, anything extra to it, but um, you're more than welcome to add. And if you do um, add some hot cocoa to it, I would estimate I started in the, my very first one I made, I only put a half a cup of cocoa in it. I felt like that, that was enough. Um, I probably wouldn't use any more than one cup of cocoa. Um, so that um, obviously if you really love cocoa, you could, but I would say keep it under, generally speaking, keep it under one cup of cocoa. All right. So this has, um, this tab has, the chocolate around this tab has now hardened um, pretty good. So basically um, what I'm going to do is I can take this cake board and flip it over. So I'm gonna press it against there. And then we're just going to gently maneuver it over. Hopefully this will come off nicely. Um, I'm in a humid uh, environment <laughs> uh, typically. So sometimes if I let these let this sit too long in the mold, it actually kind of warms up a little bit too much and re adheres to the mold. Um, so I like to try to remove the plastic as soon as I, I can. Um, but usually once you get one side removed, the other side will come off. Now, um, we have the seam around here. Some people don't mind the seam, some people do. Um, if you're going to decorate it, like I have the one over here, I didn't uh, remove the seam on here and I kind of just decorated the, oops, let me get that on camera, remove the top half of it. So you can kind of see my seam is still there and that is not the pretty side of it. Or the other side. <laughs> so, okay, but if you are concerned about the seam, we have this seam tool and Let's see if I have it packaged, but it's in similar packet. It's in a similar package like this, except it is um, just is the seam tool by itself. So it has the Kaboom Chocolata packaging. Um, but basically, what you do, you can. It has two ends to it. Um, you can use either end, and you just apply light pressure, and you scrape off some of that excess chocolate. With the Kaboom Chocolata molds, they usually, most of them won't give you too much of a seam to scrape off. They actually kind of break away rather nicely from the, um, from the, the mold, the pinata from the mold, so that's good. But, um, you know, if you want to smooth it down, you just kind of rub it against, um, and then you have, these chocolate shavings 
And I actually have this blower tool that I just kind of press um, some air and knock those shavings off. So that's kind of a neat little tool. I think it's actually a camera tool where when they're trying to clean up their cameras and make sure there's not any dust in them. I think that's actually what it is. So it's, it's a neat little tool. Um, but then that way, a lot of the chocolate shavings will come off and you don't have to touch it. All right. So we are basically, let me see, is there anything else I wanted to cover? Obviously, if you wanted to smash it, you could use your Kaboom mallet to smash it. Generally, um, we would, at this point, we would go on to decorating unless we have some questions. We don't have any questions, but I do want to address a couple of things really quick. I want to uh, once again, just apologize to those who may have received the, the incorrect link. Um, so we are going to be in the process of making sure that you guys get the recorded class. But we do want to thank you again so much for joining us, even though it may have been late. So please know that this class is recorded and will be available um, on our YouTube channel as well as michaels.com. If we are able, we will try our best to get it out to your personal email address um, that is on file. So once again, I just wanna thank everyone and we do hope that you go back and watch the recording from the beginning. Yeah, and I would, I, I think we have a couple of minutes. I can go over um, decorating too, if, that's, um, if that works. Uh, and that's for fun. everybody. There is one person that um, is asking, instead of using the multiples, could she use the chocolate chips? So chocolate chips uh, are for baking. Baking chocolate chips are really only for baking. They do not um, get down to a nice smooth texture. So no, I would not use baking chocolate chips for um, these molds. They, they, they're for baking, not for chocolate making. All right, but yeah. some people use um, almond bark. Um, I, I haven't used that. I typically use the meltables. That's kind of my, <laughs> the thing I prefer. But people, um, I have heard that they've used almond bark and I think those were, that works uh, well. And so there's a lot of different options. All right, let's go over just, um, and there's no more questions. Let's just go over quickly. Um, decorating because I do get um uh personally I do get a lot of questions about how to do this drizzle and um the which I know doesn't look that well because I wanted to use I really really like sweet tooth fairy's peppermint so I wanted to use that but because it has the peppermint chips in it didn't come out of my piping bag really well so that's only one word of caution so that's just a little extra tip there but normally what you would do um, and let me just try to do the red here. Let me quickly heat this up just a little bit. So it's, it looks to be um, maybe just ready to start cooling down too much. And I don't, I want to make sure it gives you a nice drizzle. Um, so if you just want to do a drizzle, you would, um, I'm gonna try to, while that's heating up, talk a little bit about it to um, make sure we have enough time. But to put it in a piping bag or a Ziploc bag or some, you know, heat food safe bag. And um, you want to work as uh, fast as you can if you want a nice even drizzle. So you'll, you know, kind of go back and forth as quickly as you can. Um, let's see. So I'm going to, I don't have a lot of red here. We're just gonna focus on the red right now. So I'm going to pour it in my piping bag. And um, I put it in the bag in a cup first and then normally you can twist it, twist it off or if you have a twist tie uh, for sake of time, I'm just going to twist a little bit. And depending on how thick you want your lines will depend on how um, much you want to cut off that piping bag. Um, typically, I try to cut this off away, away from the food because these little bits of plastic, obviously I don't want in my food. 
um, but just to kind of, maybe we switch over to the overhead, just to kind of show you um, how much I'm cutting off on camera. Let me make sure I get up there. So just a tad bit and hopefully that went up there, shot up front somewhere. Okay, so I start at one end and you can, to make sure you're getting, you know, make sure it's coming out of the bag, you can, you know, just start a nice good flow um, into your bowl first. And then you kind of start off away until you get the right pressure amount. And then, oops, that did not turn out. And then you just go back and forth. So I'm not really doing really great straight lines. I think my chocolate might have been, uh, still been a little bit too warm, but I wanted to kind of give you an idea of how it would look. Um, with this one over here, I just did some loop-de-loops, you know, so get a nice good pressure, do some loop-de-loops. Um, we have some, why your chocolate is still, uh, uh, hasn't cooled down is when you want to make sure, I should have had these bags open, but Sweet Tooth Fairy has a lot of sprinkles, so you can make sure, um, you can pour some sprinkles on there if you want. Um, you know, you can, these balls would make, you could make a, a Santa Claus with a black belt, um, snowman elf, I mean, you name it, you could do so much with all these different, uh, pinatas. So, um, for the egg shell, for example, um, the egg, uh, kaboom chakalaka mold, I was thinking, I was like, okay, well, how will I incorporate that for Christmas? And I'm thinking, oh, well, that would make, that could make a Christmas tree, a snowman, a reindeer, even an elf. I mean, that one is so versatile. So you want, you might want to make sure you pick that one up before Easter. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're, if you have any of the molds and you're looking for ideas, definitely follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, TikTok. I try to do educational videos um from you know more complex things to just basic things like i'm i'm about to put one out there of how to remove letters from a silicon mold that seems to be a common question so a lot of these are common questions that um you know i'm just trying to answer and things like that so uh this this officially is my last class with michael so i i highly encourage you guys to follow me so um if you're interested in creating anything uh like i said i have a ton of ideas um, I don't have a ton of time to do them all, but I, I, I don't mind sharing them in the least bit. If you do make it, any of these molds the, with the Kaboom Chakalaka molds, um, definitely hashtag Kaboom Chakalaka, hashtag Make It With Michaels, hashtag AC Food Crafting for American Crafts Food Crafting, uh, Michaels Classes, things like that. And share, if you tag me often I will reshare it to your two stories so um this one if you're looking for a little elf on the shelf ideas this one says I'm back and it has a little elf hat on it so that's another option if you're looking for the heart this one was the cube obviously that would make a good Christmas present so let me see am I forgetting anything any more questions if you can give your out your Instagram one more time. Yeah, so it is uh, Kaboom Chakalaka. Everything, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Pinterest, is all under all together one one word together. Kaboom Chakalaka. Okay, that is it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, thank you everybody for your time and attention. Again, sincere apologies for you know, the difficulties you might've experienced getting registered and coming in, but hopefully you'll view the recording. It will be on, up on YouTube. Definitely give it a like or send me feedback. You know, I love doing these classes, but I also want to improve. So, you know, if you don't like it, send me a direct, a DM, you know, I will wait it. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you, everybody.